Hello, my name is Rain and welcome to my channel where I discuss Fantasy Formula 1. The game has finally updated after some um, technical difficulties earlier in the week. So let's finally discuss what happened in Mexico and what my plans are for Brazil. But before we do that, let's talk about what's happening on this channel this week and weekend. Since it's a sprint race or sprint weekend once again in Brazil, I will be doing a sprint quality watch along live here on my channel on Friday. Since everything that I talk about in this video and in future contents throughout the week uh, will not be finalized until we see what happens there. If it's your first rodeo with a sprint weekend this year, for some reason, the sprint, uh, the deadline for F1 Fantasy is before the sprint race and not the sprint qualifying, meaning you can look at the sprint qualifying before making your very, then very, very educated uh, and nuanced decisions. So we're going to watch it together. And then afterwards on Friday, we're going to be discuss what uh, discuss what the results of the sprint qualifying actually means for our F1 Fantasy team. So do not miss that. Probably the most important bit of content that I will be making on this channel this week. And then on Saturday, of course, we'll be doing a deadline stream once we've slept on all the information from the sprint qualifying. Uh, I will be doing a... I will be doing a deadline stream as usual right here on this channel two hours before the deadline before the sprint race. So do not miss that. I'll see you live here on the channel this weekend. Let's talk about what happened in Mexico. So I ended up using my final fix finally. And after all this talk, I was so worried that the final fix was going to be a dud, a negative overall decision. But it ended up actually working out quite well. Not as well as it could have, but decently nonetheless. I ended up final fixing Leclerc out for Carlos Sainz. And then Carlos Sainz went and won the race. So that's fantastic for me. But courtesy of Yuki Tsunoda, I have a red arrow of 307. So just a small, small red arrow uh, that was strictly Yuki Tsunoda. Earlier in the week, when the f when the points launched for the first time and, and Albon and Tsunoda had a bunch of overtakes, I actually had a much bigger red arrow because... All the Albon owners did not receive the negative 20 that they should have. And Albon's owned by 50% of the field. So once Albon's negative points, you know, came in, I actually got a smaller red arrow. And it's the first red arrow in a while. I've had a pretty decent string of results recently. So I'm actually not too worried about it. It does, however, put me outside the top 10k which is where I want to be at the end of the season. The final fix then, let's quickly discuss it a bit more. So I've over here on F1 Fantasy Tools, I've removed all the sprint and qualifying points since we're only looking at the race points. And what ended up happening is the fastest lap went to Charles Leclerc, which made the decision seem less good than it was. I only ended up gaining nine points from it. Sainz did score the highest in the race with the driver of the day, the two overtakes and the win, which is what I predicted he would do. If Leclerc had not gotten the fastest lap, he would have been on 18 points, and then my decision would have looked a hell of a lot better. I ultimately should have ended up doing Norris to Sainz, but with Norris's pace there at the end, if he had not been held up by Max Verstappen at the start of the race, I think he could have gone on to win it, and if he won, I think he would have gotten driver of the day, and uh, Norris did have the fastest lap before, I mean, everyone pit onto softs at the end to try and steal the fastest lap. I'm actually somewhat happy that the fastest lap point is gone next year. If you haven't seen that, that's something that's happening because this pitting onto softs doesn't feel correct. I feel like Norris actually had the fastest race lap. People just pit on fresh softs and, and did a lap for fun. Uh, so it's impossible to predict the fastest lap. I feel like Norris was the closest to actually getting it, if that makes sense. But uh, he only ended up getting 21 points in the race, which was less than Leclerc's. But Leclerc would have been on 18 if he had not gotten that or if Perez had, had uh, been faster than him. I don't think that would have happened, but it all the final fix only gave me nine points total, but it's still a positive score, right? It's still plus points. It's not a negative uh, transfer. I saw some people do Leclerc to Piastri, and I mean, I would feel pretty hard done if I were you. You would have gained eight points. Instead, you lost two. If it was on your DRS slot, it could have been, you know, it would have been uh, 16 points gained or now four points lost because of that fastest lap. But it's just not something that you can predict. And I feel like Leclerc from third, that's sort of where I was and a lot of us were expecting to be. And I will say I love F1 Fantasy Tools, but the sort of race pace simulation, the, the, the race results final fix simulation that they did uh, really overvalued uh, Piastri, in my opinion, because it favored Piastri for driver today. And I think 
it's sort of based on calculations from previously that someone who does a lot of overtakes uh, and, and goes from something like a P17, P18 up into the, you know, P4, P5 area, though they usually get driver of the day. But that was back last season when Max Verstappen won every race and people were tired of Max Verstappen winning. So driver of the day were given to someone else. Now that we don't know who's winning every race, I feel like the plus 10, which again, I think is way too much. The driver today points just go to whoever is, whoever is winning. So what is important for us right now as F1 fantasy managers is, 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 is nailing the winner, right? Because the winner does not get 25 points, they get 35 points. Because the driver of the day seems to always go to the winner. And it has, it has been that way for some time. The only really two that I, like recent races was, I guess, Bel the Belgian Grand Prix. Because Russell didn't get it, even though he initially won it. Hamilton got it, which I thought was weird. I thought Russell deserved driver of the day. Then he ended up getting disqualified, but that's a different, you know, different story. Uh, and then Landon Norris did not get it in uh, in Singapore despite winning. So uh, the the driver of the day has been given to oh, it was not given to Lawson. Sorry, it was given to Daniel Ricciardo because he took fast slap. That was more of a courtesy thing. I think uh, Daniel Ricciardo did not deserve driver of the day there. So. Most of the time, I feel like the winner gets driver of the day, which means it's 35 points instead of 25, which means we have to get the winner into our teams. Colapinto continues to be the GOAT. Uh, he's now more expensive than Bottas after some, some price increases. Bottas continues to be super disappointing. Two points despite finishing 14th. If he had not been 15th, it would have been, been way better. Uh, Show has just been so much better than, than Bottas for the past three races, and it's really unfortunate that someone who transferred out Show to Bottas because Bottas was slightly cheaper than Show, and then Show has gone on to increase in price like three times in a row, and Bottas has decreased in price three times in a row, creating this massive gap between them. The only reason for that is because Show's worse than Bottas. Bottas uh, keeps finishing above him in qualifying, whereas Show is 20th every qualifying, uh, and ends up gaining some positions after DNFs and people pitting for fastest laps. Because that's stupid. Again, I, I am so happy that the fastest lap point... Again, the fastest lap point might not be gone for F1 fantasy. But it's definitely gone from F1's point scoring in general. And I'm very, very happy about that. Because the, the entire thing... Of, uh, pitting for softs... It, that, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Anyway. With that said. Let's talk about what my plan is likely to be. Yes, Yuki got... Minus 20 points for DNFing. Very unfortunate. But I'm not too upset by it because I sold Albon for him. I would have never bought Pierre Gasly. And Albon also DNF'd, so it would have been the exact same thing. Uh, now I have to consider, do I keep Yuki? Do I go back to Albon? What do I do with him? Him decreasing in price and pretty much every other C tier increasing in price apart from Valtteri Bottas uh, means that uh, there's not much I can afford here. I can afford a Gasly, but again, do I really want Pierre Gasly? The McLaren and Ferrari seem like the two by far best cars right now the mercedes upgrades are not really working yet they are still clearly the fourth fastest team maybe the third fastest team i think max would have been ahead of the mercedes had he not done what he did and and um driven like a complete madman the mercedes for me is just an avoid right now i think mclaren and ferrari are likely staying until the end of the season i'm not testing my fate with red bull max verstappen would rather um play bowling with Lando norris's car as one of the pins than actually trying to finish the race. So I'm not going to bother with that, especially since Checo's still in the car. Checo's completely useless. He doesn't do anything for F1 Fantasy or for the team whatsoever. Uh, he is solely the reason why they are P3 in the Constructor Championships and have literally no way, reason, or uh, even expectation to finish above McLaren or Ferrari this season. Crazy how, how the tides have turned. Uh, but, I mean, Checo has not been P5 or above in what 14 races time or something it's it's nuts it's nuts how how poor he's been this season like okay he hasn't gotten a podium but a p4 a p5 finish he should have managed that during this time uh and uh max verstappen just keeps being the goats i am not touching max verstappen i'm not touching uh red bull because they want to crash into Lando norris now does this mean i sell Lando norris Probably not, because Lando still looks fast and still looks to be in the fastest car most of the time. The upgrades that McLaren are bringing seem to work in bringing them back slightly, but the the removal of that rear wing that they had in Azerbaijan has really sort of brought Ferrari closer. And Ferrari has not brought upgrades, mind you. And they, I don't know if they have 
upgrades in the wing. There were rumored reports that they would bring updates to Kota, but then they just haven't brought upgrades, and they still are the fastest cars and have won uh, have have uh, won the past two races. So. Ferrari and McLaren, as terms of constructors, are staying until the end of the season, unless something crazy happens. For the drivers, I'm happy owning Landon Norris and, and McLaren. I still think Landon Norris is the best 2x option going forward, but I'm going to wait and see to what happens, obviously, in sprint qualifying, and seeing sprint qualifying is definitely going to change my opinion on this. If the Ferrari still looks really strong, an option could be to try and 2x the main Ferrari driver and selling Landon Norris to... Carlos Sainz. I know Carlos Sainz increased a million, so if you had him in your team and didn't final fix him in, you're uh, quite a bit richer now. But bringing in Carlos Sainz and doing the triple Ferrari, which would have worked really, really well for those of you that did it, it's just a shame, again, that the FP3 results for Ferrari looked so bad that we were all scared off of it. The triple Ferrari looks really good, and the, the good thing with this is that I can actually um, get Alex Albon uh, with this. So I could run this sort of team and get rid of Bottas and the kicks completely, which looks pretty appealing. But again, the difference between a Bottas and an Albon is way, way, way less than the difference between someone getting P2 and P1. So if Norris looks like to be P1, then I'd rather keep Bottas, obviously. But if the Ferrari looked to be fastest, this is something I could do, and I'm not unlikely to do this. Um, with this, I could also do this, right? Uh, this would be all three of my transfers if I want to have Liam Lawson over Yuki Tsunoda. Um, but that leaves no money in the bank. But I don't really need money in the bank anymore because I I don't need to final fix anymore. So if I prefer Liam Lawson over Yuki Tsunoda, I could do that. I can in no way, shape or form reach Nico Hulkenberg anymore. So that's just, a for, uh, you know, I just got to forget about that. But this is the, you know, the three transfers that I... And maybe looking to make. If I don't want to sell Norris, but Sainz looks to continue his his strong showing over Leclerc, I could sell Leclerc for Carlos Sainz. The problem with that is then I I, I can't afford uh, I can't afford Alex Albon with this. I would have to do something else as well. So that upgrade just doesn't seem worth it anymore. If I do Yuki Tsunoda to uh, Alex Albon. That you can know to Alex Albon then doesn't change anything. I'm just I'm I'm literally just stuck with Valtteri Bottas. I guess I can get Shogun Yu, which maybe that looks like a strong move considering his his recent results. These results, by the way, are literally only because he's starting last and and people are DNFing around him. So, I I do feel like maybe I I could upgrade Bottas to show to get an extra three four points per race at this point i gotta squeeze out every little bit imaginable and if if i don't have any other move to make then then sure i i'll i'll, I'll consider doing that um i do think uh, i can keep yuki Tsunoda here or i can decide to go back to albon if uh the williams look good and like the williams do look good colapinto looks amazing alex albon has just been really really unlucky recently dnf in singapore dnf in mexico um and uh and even though he got 11 points in kota he really did not have a good race overall he was kind of stuck behind a lot of cars and, and merely did a couple of overtakes but surely at some point it has to turn for alex albon so i am more likely to go for alex albon over yuki Tsunoda. i feel like the williams is still better than the v carb and uh uh I think Albon is more likely than someone like a Yuki Tsunoda to pop up with a potential P8 or P9 if he can get his act together. So really, that's kind of it. I'm not really interested in Piastri at all unless something happens in sprint qualifying. Uh, I know we said that before and we got baited by it, but if something happens in sprint qualifying and Piastri doesn't make it through, stuck in Q1 again... I would be very, very uh, tempted to get Piastri in there. But other than that, I'm likely to do either double Ferrari driver or Lando Norris plus one of the two. If this is still Charles Leclerc, by the way, uh, I am just stuck with Valtteri Bottas and I can decide to do Albon or Sonoda. And, and that would be my only move this week. So I'm not that likely to actually make that many transfers this week. 
it's all sideways moves. There's no restructuring or big restructuring. And I don't think it will be essentially for the rest of the season if this run of form for the teams continue. One final thing to discuss, though, with Brazil is the weather. Now, if you haven't seen it, it is looking like a rainy one. Um, right, actually, during the uh, the sprint race time on on Saturday. So there could be some chaos. And then Sunday as well. They're like just over the afternoon when the race is being held. We haven't had a rainy race in some time, it feels like. So because of this reason, I think chips like no negative and autopilot are really, really strong here in Brazil. Obviously, if you haven't used your 3X yet, you have to wait for the sprint qualifying and then see if the sprint qualifying looks like a good time for your team to use the 3X or if you want to save it for Qatar. But it should be prioritized over something like a no negative or autopilot because the upside of points you get from a 3X has to be valued over the risk of rain. So you have to look at what chips you have remaining and if you have limitless or the 3x the two most powerful points gaining chips you should prioritize getting that if it looks good but if you want have have already used them like i have or if it doesn't look like a good sprint qualifying for those chips and for your team consider using the two you know points loss averse i guess uh chips in um in uh, the autopilot and the no negative the rain could lead to dnfs but since it's a sprint weekend there's also an additional race that someone could dnf in which obviously uh brings you a lot of negative points so even if you say pick the correct 2x option in Landon norris if he gets run off the track by Land by max verstappen in the sprint but then ends up winning the uh the race Maybe someone like a Charlotte Claire who comes second, second, or maybe wins the sprint and, and comes second in the uh, in the regular race would actually outscore him over the course of the weekend. So then autopilot could be good. Obviously, if you have no negative, that's fantastic. That's even better. Uh, the no negative is definitely prioritized above the autopilot ship. The autopilot has a, essentially a 50-50 chance to just be useless, right? Uh, because you could have just picked the right one. So prioritize the 3x and the limitless. After that, it's the no negative, and then it's the autopilot ship. If you have already used all these ships and still have your final fix and didn't use it, final fix are also really, really good in sprint weekends because you can look at the sprint qualifying, select your team for the sprint, and then after the regular qualifying for the race, you can make the final fix change if there's another crazy thing that happens in the regular qualifying for the main race. So final fix are also really, really powerful. If you have a wild card, I would consider not using it because there could be things happening with the final fix. And I think if you still have your wild card, you have probably been a bit stingy with your chips. So I would imagine you still have your autopilot or your no negative as well. And then I would definitely prioritize them over that. And at this point, like on wild card, if you don't already have a team that's somewhat similar to this with a few variations, I feel like you've already kind of dropped the ball. If you have your wild card and you, your team is completely different, you're sitting with Max Verstappen and Red Bull Racing, obviously, I mean, you, you need to bring McLaren and Ferrari in there. I think that's non-negotiable non -negotiable at this point. But I think the wild card is the weakest ship by far for this weekend. And for me personally, I only have my autopilot ship remaining. And it's very, very, very likely to be used this weekend. I don't see another race, you know, Las Vegas... Uh, Qatar or Abu Dhabi that even look remotely as good as this one, especially considering that it's a sprint race and that it's raining. So I'm 95% sure that I'm using autopilot. The only instance where I might not use it is if the weather changes and it looks dry and I'm running double Ferrari in there. And like, say, I, I think Leclerc is going to be better than Sainz. But even then, like, science has been really good. So so even in that case, it's like an 80% chance of using it. So I'm very, very likely to use my final ship of the season for this race in Brazil. And uh, I think you definitely should use a chip if you have something remaining uh, in this race. I mean, literally all chips I've mentioned now, apart from maybe wildcard, are not going to, you're not going to find a better opportunity 
again, there could be a really, really good opportunity in the sprint in Qatar uh, if for 3x and limitless, if the qualifying aligns, things like that. But overall, I don't see the potential in the coming three races compared to a rainy Brazil to use any other chips. So I think you should use your chips in this weekend if you have any remaining. I will most likely be using my autopilot chip. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'm usually pretty good at answering comment, uh, questions in the comments in the first uh, two days or so after I drop a video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It means a ton to me. Like the video. Uh, follow me on social media if you want to see updates. Uh, otherwise, um, if you want to see updates around things when it's happening live, me chatting about the game not working, things of that nature. So uh, I'll see you on Friday and Saturday for the deadline stream and the sprint quality watch along. Do not miss those. Definitely watch the sprint quality with me. It's going to be a blast. I'll see you then. Goodbye.